Hello everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B show. Now Valentine's Day is approaching, so we're going to have a few things based around this day of celebration of love. So first of all, we have fashion journalist and stylist Cynthia Liza Gregoire, and she'll be sharing her tips on styling, some fun tips actually, and also makeup expert Theresa Megan Gregoire, she'll be showing us her creative ideas for makeup for this day. I'll also be talking about 10 things people who are failures do. So, you know, I think that's something very important to talk about if you want to be a success, that is. And also we have Hannah Richards and she'll be showing us how to make meatballs with an Indian twist. And we'll also have a fitness tip with Jane Rafter. But let's talk to the lovely Excel first of all with some news. Oh, you're lovely, Christine. How are you, my lovely? I'm very well, thank you. Good to be here as always. Hello, viewers. I have, I'm glad you mentioned love because I do have a love story starting this segment today. Oh, do you? Yes, I, I think I briefly mentioned him the last time, but I didn't have a photo, so I thought I'd bring it today oh, to yes. start this up. Okay. But for those who didn't catch that episode, I shall repeat for your, um, you know, for you to get into the what we're talking about. A Crystal Palace fan, he oh, found, that. yes, he, he, he claimed to have lost his love on a train from um, Bonmouth to Southampton, where he sat next to this person, and apparently she shared his, um, she put his scarf around her neck and they took a selfie together. And then he lost her, and he was saying, Please help me find this girl because I lost her and I where fell is in she? love. Where is she? Let's have a look so at her. So if we have a look at this, is her. Look at them. They look, look about 12 years I old. I know, they look cute <laughs> together. Adorable. And um, the message got retweeted, like I said, I mean, I'm sure by now it's probably even more but at that time I said the, the he got I think he got over 3,000 retweets because he put this on Twitter. And the thing is has this girl been located? Well I haven't actually um, checked to see oh. in all honesty I'm really sorry I'm very sorry it's disgraceful but I just thought I'd meet my promise. This, this I know I'm supposed out. to be helping this quest for love I do apologize but I am sure that the Twitterati are onto it I have faith in the Twitterati. This <laughs> picture has been tweeted 3,000 times. I'm sure she's been spotted. Fantastic. Someone will know her, wouldn't they? Indeed, indeed. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, this, I spotted this video and it was absolutely hilarious. And I have to get the, you know, your viewers here to see it. If we check this video out and then I can explain more about it, but it was fantastic. Let's take a look. Check out this policeman lip syncing to Taylor Swift's Shake It Off. Got nothing in my brain. That's what people say. Mm -hmm. That's what people say. Mm -hmm. I go on too many dates. <laughs> but I can't make them stay. At least that's what people say. Mm -hmm. That's what people say. Mm -hmm. But I keep cruising. Can't stop. Police in Delaware, USA uploaded the footage to YouTube, which is part of their new web series called Dashcam Confessionals. In a Facebook post, they added, Taylor Swift, if you're watching, we're sorry. Hey, hey, just think, while you've been getting down and out about the liars and the dirty, dirty cheats of the world, you could have been getting down to this sick beat. My ex-man brought his new girlfriend, she's like, oh my Shaking to the fella over there with the hella good hair. Won't you come on over, baby? We can shake, shake, shake. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Classic. I have he to just say. knew every single word of that he, song. Oh my god! I bet if he has a teenage daughter, she'd be so proud of her daddy <laughs> now. She'd be like, extremely Yay! embarrassed. Oh my, <laughs> oh my goodness. I wonder how many views that has. Do you know? I, I know. It's, I think, oh gosh, I couldn't, I couldn't keep up with all these videos, so I was too busy laughing. But I have to say <laughs> that I wasn't quite clear as to whether 
he knew or whether you know he knew that was there because apparently mm. this is something that the police force are doing they just like oh really they just like, put the cam court. yeah cam confessionals they called it and so I, didn't, I don't know if he knew he was being filmed but i thought it was absolutely <laughs> hilarious and it was the way he was doing the whole he was sort of like did the whole suit and the next one. yeah <laughs> Oh, it looks like a lot of fun. Doesn't it was it? absolutely hilarious. I love it, love it. So I just thought I had to share that with you. Um, <laughs> another story I followed up on. Remember the young mum who was given five pound by a stranger yes. on a train. Well, she got really touched by it, and she actually um, went online again as well to do the whole, you know, let's find this person. I need to find out who this stranger was. This fifty-year-old man who um, gave her this said she was a credit to her generation from mm -hmm. um, viewers who remember and um, she actually went on Yahoo and decided to just sort of help me find this man I don't know who he is you know he gave me a, a, gave me money she's really touched etc and eventually he got found so this is a lovely mother and son here Samantha and Rylan and um, she had been visiting family in Crewe and so was heading home to Plymouth when she changed trains to Birmingham and so that's when she then got on the same train as him. Mm -hmm. So he got off the train at Bristol and before then, you know, he had given her the cash. And of course, when they met each other, Rylan was actually very um, um, sort of thankful as well, saying he's going to spend it on, her mom, on his mummy, he said. Aww. But of course, she said as well that no, she's going to put it in a trust fund for little Rylan for being very well behaved. But... I mean, the things he was saying that he, the, that um, the gentleman was saying, Ken, he said things like, for example, she was playing games with him. You know, she's telling him not to um, to close his mouth when he was coughing. And for example, when somebody got on the train, she asked him to get up and sit on her lap, let the person sit in the chair. So he just said it was something pleasant, that it was nice to see, mm -hmm. you know, good behavior from, from youngsters nowadays. And I thought, you know, so that's really very, very good. But the fact that it had to be, because I think, again, as with everything on social media, we have people who make their comments. And someone actually said something that was quite poignant and said, if this is what is making the news, it's actually sad. It, yeah, I, I, I was kind of thinking that just now because everyone should be behaving that way exactly. anyway. So it is sad that exactly. we're having to talk about it as something really, wow, different. You know, and, and the fact that she, I suppose, got the reward as well. I think, I suppose that's what made it a bit extra, a bit different. But it is, it is true though. You find people, I have to say, I'm sorry, I'm going to have a little rant now. <laughs> there are some times, right, you see people just sitting, like little kids that could probably sit together they all take up the seats. And, yeah, it's and true. you kind of just think, I'm really sorry, but I'm a paying passenger and I have to stand. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And you little kids, you didn't have to pay for your fare. <laughs> that's what exactly, that's exactly what I, I have to be honest. I'm sorry, that's what I think. thinking, you're riding free with mummy on this train and I have to stand and I paid a hefty amount for my ticket. You two could sit together. You, if I had three of you could sit in that, but they take up like one, one on top after, of the other. And you just think, all right, I'll just be nice now. I'll just stick a paper in my face and pretend I can't see you. But I think, you know, it is, I suppose it is commendable because I think it's down to what the parents also, you know, teach, teach yeah. the children, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, keeping it with children, a six-year-old girl tugged on the heartstrings of rail bosses when she wrote a letter begging them to get her father home on time so that he could tuck her in at bedtime. Oh, <laughs> oh bless. Uh, this where is she? Do we have a picture? Well, this is, this, I have a picture of her letter. It's actually oh. quite hilarious. It says, Dear Mr. Railway Man, my <laughs> daddy is always late home and I miss him very much because he always used to tuck me into bed. This makes me upset. Please get him home on time. Daddy says you take all his money. That is why I can't go to Disneyland. I really want to go to Disneyland. Ella, aged six. Oh. I mean, it's just, and then he then took, this guy took a picture of his daughter's letter and shared it on Twitter and said, look, please share my daughter's letter. I think Southern Rail UK should compensate my daughter for her time without her dad. I pay 4,000 pounds per annum. And I ex accept the odd disruption, but there's major chaos in every journey. It is stressful. And so actually somebody t retweeted, um, replied the tweet from Southern um, Railway mm -hmm. and said, really sorry for the disruption caused to you. Genuinely has got me welling up. I'm sorry. <laughs> And then a spokesperson for Southern said, we are sorry that Mr. Porter, Mr. Porter has been delayed on his way home and that his daughter misses him. Trains to Victoria and London Bridge travel <laughs> over the most congested part of the whole of Britain's railway network. And we are constantly pushing against the boundaries of what is physically possible. Blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah, de, blah. We and Network Rail are determined to improve the situation and have made additional changes to the timetable today to help with this. Okay. 
I'm hoping that this is making. What and about so, Disneyland? That's what we little want Ella. to know. I know. So I think I think Southern should pay for a trip to Disneyland <laughs> for Little Ella. Let's campaign six. for that. Yay. Yeah, yeah. We should. I think we should. <laughs> so you're gonna stay with us? Absolutely. Okay. We'll do stay tuned, folks, with some creative ideas on styling and makeup for Valentine's Day from the Gregoire sisters. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back everyone. So now I have the lovely Gregoire sisters with me and we're going to be talking Valentine's styling and makeup. So we're going to start off with Megan first of all. Great. Okay. So Valentine's Day makeup. So one of the things I did was I took um, my favorite Valentine Day looks and I just took little snippets here so that I could show your viewers my favorite looks for Valentine's Day. Okay. So here we have um, uh, just a classic winged liner with a pink lip. Um, similar to that of a red lip, but when we think of Valentine's Day, we think of red lips and mm. hearts and all this red but i would actually suggest that you get the same look with a hot pink and yeah. hot pink lipstick is a little bit more um, valentine's day in my view and a little bit more special than wearing that everyday red look Usual. right mm -hmm. so it's like you want to do something a little bit special for that night we have variations here i have Nicki minaj and she's wearing a bubblegum pink lip actually it doesn't really look bubblegum pink in the monitor here but um <laughs> basically she's got that pink lip look mm. so there's you know a variation of pinks the hot pink medium pink and they actually tend to here's um emma stone and she basically has a pink lip that works for her skin tone. Again, similar to what you have, Chrissy, yeah. um, you have a very pigmented lip. And so you can see Nicki Minaj is, is actually nice, deeper skin. Mm -hmm. It looks very nice, similar to the look of a, red, of a red lipstick. But what I do want to kind of focus on and show your viewers is how to get these eyes. Now, let's say you're going to uh, work and you don't want to put your Valentine's Day makeup on um, or maybe let's say you're going from work to your Valentine's Day date mm -hmm. and you don't have time to blend all four colors this is what it would look like let's say going to work so you have your white you have your brown in the crease you could even leave the black there for later in the wing liner for later and we'll just demonstrate on Cynthia because I'm going to blend in a very red hot pigment so and at the moment you've just got one color there have you in the moment in the moment cynthia has actually she has a pale pink okay. which um i've blended brown in but it almost looks nice a uh, little bit of a purple mm -hmm. hue yeah. which i love because actually it's chocolate brown and it actually has that three-dimensional look but we're going to add now just a little bit of red in the crease above the socket so you want to go above the socket you've already blended in a brown and just do the same on the other side and you don't want it to look um, unblended here so we're just going to get as, as much off here as we can so we can swish it around and you actually want to be very precise in where you're putting this above so that you don't actually go over the nice palette of pink there because you do want to create that dimension you want to create that smoldering valentine's day makeup look mm -hmm. that just makes it a little bit brighter you can see how much of an impact that is now we're going to because she's going for you know there's probably a candlelight dinner so we want her really to bring out that smoldering valentine's day look so we're just going to add a bit of charcoal on the end here and christy i had done this before on the show but when when you have dark pigments you start from the outer corner okay and work inwards so it's always darker pigments and then inwards into the crease and do the exact same mm -hmm. on the other side. So we'll just 
really get that definition, that smaller. You can see how many beautiful colors, because she actually only had, when she went to work, the light pink and the chocolate brown, but it looked like she had three, because mm, when they blended did, yeah. together, it had this little soft kind of really purple good. look. So, you know, really, really three-dimensional, and it doesn't take a lot of time, and do you know, it, it does help if you do do a basic look and then build on it. Mm -hmm. One of the things, Christy, that I wanted to point out was that when you're, when you're using a red eyeshadow, you know, you have to make it really um, crisp and you have to make sure that you're using your correctors as well to do what you should do for the rest of the face. So if you have, you know, dark under eye circles, you need mm -hmm. to be putting that corrector and you need to be correcting that because there's nothing worse than, you know, accentuating with a high impact eye and then you have, you know, these dark circles yeah, out more. sort of mm -hmm. thing around, around your lips here. I've put Cynthia in a purple liner because that's one of my favorites. So we're actually putting a purple liner and then in the middle, we're going to put that popping pink. So I love this look. It's actually two colors blended that's giving that again, three dimensional look. Mm -hmm. But she actually, maybe when she went to work, wasn't wearing any lipstick at all. So I think a nice hot pink lip is very Valentine's Day. -y. And this is very high impact. So we kept the cheeks very subtle and, you know, just a little bit of bronzer, just a little bit of a pop. And there you go. So again, gorgeous. with yes, absolutely gorgeous. With the lips, you have a variation. Maybe that pink lips don't suit your style. You can go for a vampy Valentine's Day. Why don't you go and use vampy color, that dark blood red or that purple, purple, and pinks and reds are Valentine's Day key colors. And I would also put a little bit of shimmer. Got this going around. A little it. bit of shimmer in the inner corner of the eye just to catch that candlelight. Or maybe you're watching a movie and you know how the, yeah. <laughs> the reflection of the TV just catches that glitter. You yeah, never know gorgeous. where Valentine's Day might take okay. you. You want to have that little pop. So. Thank you so much for okay, the lovely Megan. makeup tip. So now yeah, we have styling. You. So let's walk over here. Okay. okay. Well, um, Chrissy, the first thing I'm going to say is um, my color today is red and I don't have any pink. So I'm going against what Megan has uh, proposed, but that's all right. <laughs> um, so I've just put together a few looks for today and people have different plans on Valentine's Day. Everything from just staying in and ordering Chinese and watching a movie to going out to black tie. So I've sort of put together three different looks with some ideas on how to dress them up and dress them down. So I think we'll start with actually Megan today, who's going to be my person who's just coming in casually, uh, staying in, sorry, casually, ordering Chinese, maybe watching a movie, but still would like to be comfortable and still would look to look nice. So we've got stilettos on in the house and uh, we, <laughs> <laughs> we have some track bottom pants. Chrissy, aren't these amazing? I love these. I'm really, I do cool. too. Leopard prints, still very popular. They're fitted. We've put them with a very fun Paul and Joe sister Disney blouse. My sister loves Mickey Mouse and just rocks this outfit. Do now, tell us about that, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a Mickey Mouse doll for quite some time. Oh, did you? <laughs> okay. But Christy, when she thought that she was staying in for the night, actually her date surprised her and she's actually going to go out. She oh, didn't have very much time surprise. to get ready. So watch how we transform this outfit. Now I wish I had a black leather jacket because a black leather jacket would really work well here. But this outfit, even though they're tracksuit bottoms, they can mm. turn quite yeah. formal quickly with a little blazer or a little uh, black leather jacket. Yeah, so. that looks cool. Very nice. Um, and then we're going to just go on to Chrissy's here. So Chrissy, let's say she's going to the Woesley, where you can go anywhere from sort of casual to very elegant and dressed up. Mm -hmm. And what I've put Chrissy in is a kimono. And we've chosen this lovely like rose print um, sheer kimono. And it's just very uh, romantic with the flowers on there. When you have a silk um, shirt, you don't want to use cotton sort of vest. So we've put this Pyrus sequin one to keep it quite dressy. Mm. 
Um, we've just put casual pants on you today and jeweled up the flats. But Chrissy, you could also really jazz up that look by maybe putting some yeah, leather wax nice. pants mm -hmm. with them as well. So, Very nice. um, and the kimono is just uh, one of those pieces that you'll use into spring and yeah, summer. Definitely. So. Do you okay, like? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Cool. Um, for myself, let's just say that I was going to a black tie event or something like this. I, I kept it quite formal with this black dress with ostrich feathers on it, um, high heels, uh, black tights. We're still sort of early in the year to be going with those, um, you know, nude tights. You could, but with those light colors. So I've kept it quite dark. Um, the makeup is really what makes my, you know, have some color there with the Valentine's makeup. So thank you, Megan's makeup. <laughs> uh, just a few things on the rail today, Chrissy, to talk about. I, I did pull a few. You'd be surprised of what's red in your wardrobe. Just take a look. Here we have an oversized cut jacket, wool. Found this uh, beauty in a charity shop in Scotland. Oh, really? It was pretty cheap. It's actually, nice. I see lots of these types, like just oversized cut and in mm -hmm. red. Pretty cheap, actually. Uh, we've got red and black. Red and black is also a really cool look. So you could take these, say these jeans by Paige, the wax look, mm -hmm. and put a very casual sort of like nice. check shirt with that too. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, it's somewhere in between casual and dressed up yeah. still. So you can blend That's in nice. a lot of places. Megan's look was more of a casual look like we showed with the blazer bringing it to evening. You could do something like that by Sundry there, you know, with the love on there. Um, also another one that we, you can't go wrong with is a monochrome look. So again, uh, monochrome sort of top, pair it with those black pants. There you go. Right. Now I noticed a shoe all by itself oh, down there. Yeah. What is that shoe doing there? This shoe that about? here, this is actually supposed to go with, um, actually I'm glad you brought this up Chrissy. This is supposed to go with um, Megan's outfit. So um, basically when so I was gathering variation. things in the shop today, I left the other one behind. <laughs> but my point here was clash those animal prints, right? Yeah. Like it does, there we go, we got casual. <laughs> <laughs> and we have the stilettos. <laughs> so you pick which one is best for you. That's great. I don't know. Do you girls really like go out and buy something special for Valentine's Not Day? Really. I, I don't either. I, I really. don't tend to. I don't really sort of do anything for Valentine's because I kind of have a date with my husband. I try to have a date every week anyway yeah, to celebrate so, our love. So yeah, what about so you girls? Sweet. I'm not really a big fan of Valentine's Day, to be honest. I think it's over-commercialized and... I mean, <laughs> and there, it has a big and there we have up. it. And there we have it speaking about it on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I tend to like getting a flower, you know. I, I think it's nice when, when men do actually buy flowers or yeah. anyone buys flowers, but... You know, I, I kind of get disappointed if on Valentine's Day you I don't. See, there it is. I'm one of those. I know. That's a big hint for her, for her fiance. Yeah. Okay, so I hope he's watching. All right, so guys, we do have to go to a break, but do stay tuned because after the break, I'll be talking about 10 things that people who are failures do. Hmm. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show always aiming to show you the happier side of life you can find us on youtube facebook and twitter welcome back to the show so now i'm going to be covering 10 things people who are failures do so if you don't want to be a failure make sure you're not doing any of these things so the first one is rely on others. So people who are failures normally rely on everyone else. They rely on their friends, they rely on family members, even their employees and colleagues at work to meet all of their needs. So, you know, other people do have their own things to worry about. So we should never ever rely on anyone else. We should ask for help when we need it, but rely always on ourselves. Number two, people that are failures, they relax. They don't want to work hard because hard work is only for achievers. So successful people work to get what they want and don't rest until they have what they want. So if you don't want success either, make sure you don't make any effort or any sacrifices whatsoever. Number three, people who like to fail glue their eyes to the TV. So if you want to fail, spend all of your time in front of the box on social media, even reading newspapers and magazines all day if you can. So guaranteed you're not gonna have any other time to do anything else whatsoever. Number four, they never finish what they start. So make sure that if you want to fail, always start things and never finish them. Guaranteed failure. And number five, 
Don't take any advice from anyone. Now, people who are failures always think that they know absolutely everything. So if anyone tries to give them advice about something, they will just won't take it on board whatsoever. And then what happens is people end up giving up on them. Now, before I carry on with my next five points, let's take a look at this video with Hannah Richards. Hello and welcome to the Moo 360 kitchen, otherwise known as the MTS kitchen. I'm Hannah and this is Ben. And today we're going to do some meatballs with an Indian twist. We're going to use for the um, meat some beef mince, 500 grams of beef mince. For some flavorings, uh, we're going to use some shallots. You can use onions or red onions. Today we're going to use shallots, so Ben's going to chop them for me. We're also going to use a bit of garlic in these as well. Meatballs are traditionally, well, they're, they're, it's a Swedish recipe, um, but often in Indian cuisine, you'll see meatballs as well. So I'm just going to start with the um, herbs. Parsley, coriander, and some mint. I'm going to use two teaspoons of garam masala, a teaspoon of ground ginger, half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, a small sprinkle of some chili flakes. And now for the messy part with the hands. Mix all those spices up. So this is 500 grams of meat and you'll probably make a good 12 meatballs. So, once you've got your meatballs, I'd put them on some tin foil um, and we're gonna put them into a preheated oven at about 180 degrees for 15 minutes and then we're gonna check them. A, it's a can of, uh, of chopped tomatoes. These ones have got garlic in them. So they've come out of the oven. And I'm just going to put them back into the tomato sauce. So to accompany the meatballs, we're just going to do a really simple raw salad. So I'm just going to take um, a red pepper, um, an apple and two carrots. I'm just going to chop some chives just for a bit of green colour to finish the dish off. So there you have Indian meatballs with a raw salad ready to feed you from the inside out. Oh my goodness, Hannah and Ben, that looks absolutely delicious and I really want some right now, but we have some more points to finish off. So we're talking now about 10 things that people who are failures do. So number six, they take each day as it comes. So if you want to fail too, never plan ahead. Don't make any goals for yourself. Just, you know, take each day as it comes, wake up in the morning, take your time and don't have any clear idea of what you're going to do that day. Number seven, do everything that you can possibly do carelessly. So make sure your essays are never on time, that you've got loads of mistakes, do your work assignments any old way, and very soon your reputation is going to spread like wildfire and no one whatsoever will want to work with you. They won't want, want to be associated with you and that is also guaranteed failure. Number eight, people who like to be a failure live as they please. So they basically don't deny themselves anything. If they want to go out partying all night, they do that. Even if they have responsibilities at home or at work, they don't care if something's right or wrong. They just do whatever they want. So basically failures are known for doing everything that they feel like doing, even though it's not the right thing to do. Number nine, people that fail 
always like to give excuses for their mistakes. So they blame absolutely everyone apart from themselves. They never own up to their mistakes. They always point the finger at everyone else and guaranteed failure once again. And number 10, failures do not like to make decisions. They just go with the flow and they think it's a waste of energy to try to do anything about any issues or problems that come up. So those are the 10 points, folks, and hopefully you don't want to be a failure. So obviously, if you want to be successful, do the exact opposite. So I think we've got time for a few more news items from Excel. Hello, Excel. Yes, hello, What Chrissy. did you think of those points? Oh my gosh, I have to say that was genius, because I think at the end of the day, just don't follow what Chrissy says to do today. <laughs> I think that's what it means, yes. But I think it was very, very interesting points. People who um, don't like to make decisions, or sort of rather, people who are failures do not like to make decisions because they want to blame somebody else for when it goes wrong. Yes. And so they don't want to be responsible. For so I thought that was very, very, um, yeah. I actually had a conversation about that today, actually. Did you? Oh, mm. that's what you said, didn't it? It came, <laughs> came very, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got some um, somebody, speaking of decisions, somebody had a, a decision made on his behalf and received a very massive tax bill. A pensioner who is known by the name Doug Yeomans from Shardlow in Derbyshire received a letter from HM, HMR and, um, HMRC saying he owed, are you ready? Four billion seven hundred and forty-two million three hundred and fifty-four thousand two hundred and fifty-five pounds. Yeah, sure. He um, is a seventy-eight-year-old um, former builder, and he thought, hmm, "There's something wrong here. Maybe they think I am Richard Branson or the Chancellor of the Exchequer." But um, he actually said he could manage the 255 on the end of it if he sold his Peugeot 206 and cut down his shopping oh, at Asda. Bless. Well, it was a ridiculous figure, as you can imagine, <laughs> for, such a, you know, for such a humble gentleman. He says um, he didn't know where they got their figures from, and then he, he then called through to revenue, um, you know, called to the HMRC. And um, eventually when he got through, he just said they were very sorry for the error, and they you know, they apologise and obviously this has been passed. He's not obviously going to pay that anymore. But yes, it must have been a shock Imagine indeed. if that was the other way around and said that he was owed that much. Well, <laughs> I'd be like, oh, excuse me, sir. I'll have it paid straight into his account. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> well, another, another thing as well, um, where this woman is certainly will not be accused of being a failure, a single mother fed up of waiting for buses has won compensation after she invoiced a transport firm for wasting her time. Fabulous. Elizabeth Thomas, who is a mum of two from Bristol, became infuriated with time wasting waiting for buses and she calculated that since the summer of 2012, she has wasted about 11 and a half hours waiting for buses. And so she charged, I don't know how she got this figure though, I have to say, but she charged them £9.19 an hour. Maybe that's what she gets paid. And um, she handed them the invoice when they went to when they att she attended a public um, meeting with um, mm. First West of England that covers that area. And so she has now received an apology and a number of free travel tickets. Well done, you. Oh, very good. Indeed. Excel, you're going to stay with us, aren't you? Because we do have a bit more news after the break, folks. So don't go away. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Welcome back, everyone. Now, we are going to go back to Excel in just a moment, but first of all, let's go to the lovely Jane Rafter, who's our resident fitness expert on the show, and she's going to be showing us some bent knee scissor exercises. Hi, everyone. It's Jane here with your fitness tips. I'm going to show you um, how to get the technique right on a very common abdominal exercise, this, the scissor, the bent knee scissor exercise that you see everywhere. I see this done badly a lot of times. I'm going to give you some technique pointers to make sure you feel it in the tummy and the side of the waist and the lower abs as well. So the exercise that I'm talking about, you'll recognize it when I do it, is this one. 
So most of you at some point, I'm sure, have either seen it or done it yourself. And I'll just show you the common mistake that people make. They lift up and then as they go across to the opposite knee, they've got no stability around the pelvis and they're rolling across side to side. Can you see that? Can you see what's happening here? So I'm rolling across, just using momentum. So what you want to do instead is hold your hips and your bum still on the floor. And the twist should be across the waist and not in the hips, if that makes sense. So I'm going to hold the bum down and twist and twist. So the hips are still, the pelvis is still, and the rotation is through the waist. And the other thing that you need to make sure of is that your shoulders are coming up off the floor. So make sure that you're not just in a head lift like this. All right, you'll need to be lifted up so that you feel the upper section of your abdominals engage, and then you're in business. So good luck with your technique, and I'll see you next time. Thank you, Jane. And now it's time to go back to Excel. Do you have a bit more for us? Oh, yes, I do. Um, I think this next piece of news, if um, our viewers watching that piece that Jane has just done for us, will probably have flaunted something um, following that exercise if um, they were in London in January. I'll tell you why. Because it was the annual No Pants on the Tube Day. Oh dear. Oh yeah. Mm, well, apparently it took it took it happened in January on the Sunday across the the London network. And so, if you were sort of sitting down and maybe the the, the carriage was crowded, you would have pretty much had someone's bum in your face, oh. really, because um, apparently it it it's something that is marked that is apparently celebrates no taste and very little decency. Men and women without trousers were spotted at Northern Line stations, and. Um, oh dear, are you oh serious? Yes, exactly. And apparently it began in 2002 in, uh, let me see. Oh yeah, there you go. I should have guessed. It's Hang on, this was over here. Yeah, it happened over here as well. But it started in 2002 in New York as a stunt. And apparently it's been celebrated every year since. The international celebration of silliness. Oh dear. Yeah. Well, started in America, what more can I say? Okay, moving on swiftly from that. Well, but um, yeah, but apparently it's um, it, it spread across different countries, Germany, France, Australia, even in the cold weather of January. Oh my goodness. Yeah, they actually did that. However, one country that wasn't particularly impressed it was Romania, <laughs> where um, <laughs> they actually, um, they, they threatened to fine anybody who, because they considered it disturbing public order. Mm -hmm. it's a, you know, that's the, the, the offence. And so they threatened to fine anyone who disturbed public order or were indecent. But apparently this didn't dis dis deter anyone because I think the last photo we just showed was actually in Romania. And obviously people knew this guy was coming out and he was surrounded by cameras. But that obviously didn't deter anything. Yeah, this one. So it was absolutely hilarious that if you even have paps getting ready yeah. to you know, take photos of people who are basically showing their bum cheeks, really. No, thank you. Oh, not very nice. Well, indeed. Well, again, moving on from that, a, um, where is it? Oh, no. Yeah, there you go. A surprising <laughs> piece of news I came across, actually. We all know David Beckham. Yes, we do. What's he and done? We, and we think he's a very classy man. We think he's a very, you know, very, um, you know, kind of, you know, role model, you know, mm. kind of fashion figure, etc. But unfortunately, the young man has revealed that his kids are embarrassed by him. <laughs> well, all oh, kids are embarrassed by well, their parents, aren't they, really? Yeah, well, some people want him as a dad, but there you go. <laughs> he, he, he appeared on a, on a show in, um, in the States to talk about how since he retired from football in 2013, he's become a glorified taxi driver to his, to his children. And his oldest sons do not like being seen with him when he drops them off at school. Really? Really? Are you serious? Oh Why? my gosh. Apparently, his middle son, Romeo, who's 12, that as soon as he takes him to school and he goes to kiss him, he's kiss him goodbye, he turns his cheek away. And then Aww. when he, <laughs> but then he says, I will pick him up and then give him a bear hug and kiss him in front of his friends. Good. Oh, it's like, hey, back. I don't remember ever being embarrassed of my parents when I was younger. I, I just feel a bit uncomfortable because my dad did drop me off right at the school. 
gates and like no other child was seemed to be dropped off by their parents. I can't remember how old I was actually at the time. <laughs> But I, yeah, I was a bit embarrassed about that because I was kind of teased. But, but you see, I kind of saw that differently because if I get, I wanted to get dropped off at school, but my mum would be like, no, go with the other kids, you know, you know, mm. I'm, not that I, I didn't want to, but because I, I'll feel as though, you know, just drop me off at school. I'll play with my friends when I get to school, but she kind of encouraged me to go with them a bit yeah. more. So I wished I was dropped off a lot more because it's like, get me to school quicker, I don't have to walk. Yeah. But at the oh. end of the day, you know, he says it's hilarious that his eldest son, Brooklyn, um, who's 16 um, this year, says when he takes him to school, he says to him, Dad, park around the corner, and then he walk the rest of the way. Who knew David Beckham could be embarrassing to his own children? The whole world practically worships him, my goodness. Oh. Um, and then he says, um, actually, he said, Victoria had to remind him the other day that you've actually got quite a cool dad, <laughs> but it doesn't make any difference to the children. Whatever parents them. are parents to kids. Well, exactly. <laughs> You're still my mum and dad, you know, you're not cool. Um, <laughs> but actually, the, the most hilarious part of this news was Harper, who is his three-year-old, turned around to him the other day while he was bathing her and said, she said he was just, you know, finished bathing her and just getting her ready for bed. And she said, she said, Daddy, I love you so much, but I don't like you because you're chubby. <laughs> oh, oh, please. It's hilarious. Who knew? Who knew? Well, I suppose... That's what they say, kids, you can never trust them. They will probably tell you the truth or just be so candid. And how is David Beckham chuggy, chuggy, chubby? Well, I suppose it's maybe because she's <laughs> so little, isn't it? I suppose because she, she's little and, you know, he's... He, he, I don't know if he's really that muscular. I don't even think he's that ripped in, in that sense. So I don't think he's, like, you know, bulky yeah. or whatever. But obviously, he's bigger than she is. So <laughs> there you go. Um, but yeah, time for he, one more Excel. Yes, indeed. Well, a little bit of a, a, a nice story now. An obese young chef, Jamie Brooks, lost a staggering 21 stone wow. in one year. Did brilliant. Apparently, he was getting um, jibes from his mates and um, basically he piled on the, the pounds because he, at 14, he started working as a part-time um, staff in a kitchen and mm. he started picking at food all day so his weight rapidly sort of went up and he went to by in his 20s it was already 36 stone oh, gosh that's huge um, now he's a head chef and he will cook food all day for pub customers and then he'll gorge on fast food you know for his own meals because he couldn't go back to the kitchen when he got home so look I mean if you take a look at this that is Oh, That's wow. the before and after picture Goodness. there. He was absolutely massive. To keep up his energy at work, he would guzzle sugary drinks from the bar and he would eat whole giant packs of minstrels in one go. Mm -mm. His giant top was 7XL. That's massive. How did he lose all the weight? He said he, he dropped he, he, um, he dropped the weight when he became, where is it now? He, yeah, he went on a diet and he said he was doing, he, was, he, didn't, he didn't say which one it was, but he said he was having milkshakes and having replacement um, meals as well, mm -hmm. that he ended up growing in his confidence and also met a neighbour next door when he start, around the time he started to die and she ended up sort of getting together with him, etc., etc. Now they've found love and it's absolutely quite wonderful. But still I a have chef. to say, he's still a chef, mm -hmm. but he says now he's healthy. He has, he, he, that he was told as well that he would be dead by the time he was 40 if oh, he wasn't yeah, careful. That, that prompt. So Not now changed. he's, I think, well, how old is he now? I think he's 30. Oh no, I've lost it. 31. He's okay. Yeah, oh, he's 31 okay. now. So he's managed to claw back some health. And yeah, he's, he says he has an amazing girlfriend. He's healthy and he's looking forward to the future. Brilliant. Indeed. So thank well you done, so Jamie. much. Well, he's definitely a success, wasn't he? Yeah. Alrighty, guys. So we have reached the end of today's program. But if you want more information about the show or about the guests that we've had on today, you can visit the website chrissybshow.com. TV. And also, if you'd like to email me, if you have a success story you'd like to share, you can do so on chris at chrissybshow.tv. See you again next time. Bye-bye for now.